So in this video, I want to show you a really cool alternative that uh, Microsoft has put together here for both scoring and evaluating models together. So this is our traditional model right here. You're all very familiar with it, hopefully by now. Uh, we've got our regular split. In this case, I think I've got a 70-30 yep, split, which is pretty typical, using a logis logistic regression to predict a yes-no value for whether or not a customer purchased a bike. And we've got the typical evaluation metrics here. So just as a reminder, because we're uh, using a two-class logistic regression, that means uh, we have accuracy as our evaluation metric, precision, recall, and these things. So what I'm going to show you is an alternative called cross-validate model. So this pill, it does several things at once. It takes care of the split, train, score, and evaluate all together in a slightly different way, and I'll explain it. Um, it's more computationally intensive than these four pills, but it also uh, does a better job of minimizing the risk of model overfitting. And um, it also has a few other advantages. It will score the entire data set instead of just scoring whatever the remaining 30% is of testing data. Um, anyway, let's get right into it. So what you need here is inputs are two things. You need a, um, an algorithm and a data set. In this case, we're going to pull it straight from the select columns because that's where I went in and told it uh, we only want certain columns, including the dependent variable. Now, just like as with train model, we're going to tell it uh, what the dependent variable is. So launch the column selector here. We'll grab purchase bike, pull that in. And um, we'll use our same random seed as before. Now, here's, uh, here's how it's different exactly. Let me go to Microsoft's documentation for you. So let's scroll down. Here's how it works. Okay, it's going to divide the training data into a number of partitions that it calls folds. Now the default is 10. It doesn't give you the option, notice though, it doesn't give you the option of changing that. So if we want to change that, we, we need to pull in a partition and sampling pill and put it in between select columns and cross-validate model. And in partition and sampling, we can tell it how many folds or partitions we want. But the default is 10. And it will... Uh, then use each uh, nine of those 10 folds. Um, it, so it'll set aside one of them to use for validation, kind of like it's testing data. And then it'll use the other nine and it will randomly select these samples out of your existing data set. That's how it improves our ability to avoid overfitting is rather than use the same 70% of randomly selected data, it'll evaluate 10 different folds of data um, or nine, I guess, because it'll save one of them for testing and, and take out nine for training. And then it will give us evaluation metrics for all nine of those folds and then let it compare those evaluation metrics. So, you know, let me go ahead and just show you how it works and then we'll come back and talk through this documentation. So let's hit run and I'll pause it. Okay, that's finished. Let's take a look. So we get two things, the scored results. And again, the great thing about this is it actually takes the entire data set. So I think I have a thousand records in here and gives me all of them back scored. So uh, that could be useful for in a number of scenarios. Uh, there's another video in the supplementary section of this book that shows you how to download a score data set. So this is a great alternative to use if you want to score the entire 100% of your data set and get back those results for all of them. The other thing it gives you is evaluation metrics for each of the folds. So let's take a look at those, Can I move that over. Give us some more room. Oh, evidently I can't. Not from the, oh, here we go. Let's do that. Okay, so uh, it numbers the folds zero based. So uh, here's our 10 different folds. Oh, and then it evaluates the entire data set against them. That's right. So here's our accuracy, precision, recall, F score, AUC uh, for each one of them. And here's why this is good. Here's what I'm looking for. I want to see if these metrics are significantly different across each of the uh, folds. So there isn't a hard and fast rule here, though. So how different is too different? Uh, sorry, I, I can't tell you that. What I could tell you, because there's not a rule for it. What I can tell you, though, is that I'll sort of get used to looking at this. And as I make adjustments, maybe in my data set that I'm using to, to train this model, what I want to do is I want to see these scores right here get closer and closer together. So what they've given us right here is a standard deviation for each of these scores. So I might use this to decide if a particular data set or sample is appropriate 
Um, and then I can vary that uh, original sample and then come back here and see, does my standard deviation go up or down? As this goes down, I'm getting a more, uh, an increasingly reliable sample that is less likely to be overfit. As these numbers go up, that uh, that potential goes up. Anyway, so this is a, a great technique, uh, again, to score the entire data set, to use more of your data as testing data, because again, it's using, in this case, 90% of it. Um, but the disadvantages are that it's computationally intensive and takes a little while. So let's see if I've forgotten anything. Let's take a look here. Um, I think we explained this pretty well. Advantage of cross-validation, like I said, uses more test data. Um, it's an alternative to using the split train score and evaluate process. So um, cross validates the entire data set as well as a model. Yeah, no, I think I covered it pretty well. So what I would do in practice, I would delete all of these. They're no longer necessary. And instead, I will copy this one a couple times. Paste. Uh, let's put it right there. One more paste. Try to make this so you can see it here. All right, let's pull in our data. Let's grab some other two class models. Let's try a boosted decision trees again and maybe a neural network again. Pull those in. There we go. So notice it also makes things a bit simpler and easier visually, at least, to compare a few different options. Let's go ahead and run all of this and I'll pause it. Okay, that's all done. Let's take a look. Uh, so we've already looked at this one. Let's check out our decision trees here. Uh, evaluation results. Scroll down and take a look at what our standard deviations look like. A um, little bit smaller, but not much. Pretty darn close. Generally though, again, our accuracy is a bit better than it was. Uh, previously with the logistic regression. Um, let's see, I'm going to compare this one. This one's 0 0.0298. Pretty sure it's 0 0.03 something with the logistic regression. Let's see what it is with the neural network. Um, mean, uh, oh no, standard deviation 0 0.038. So I think it uh, looks like in terms of coming up with or minimizing overfit and coming up with cons consistent uh, folds or partitions, it looks like the boost decision trees once again is best. So let's say though that um, I, I don't want 10 folds, it's more than I really need. Uh, you can adjust that. The way you have to do it is by using the partition and sampling tool right here. What we're going to do is stick this one in between the select columns and the data input here for cross-validate. And then I can modify these parameters and say, um, I want to assign to folds, randomize seed, sure, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, partition evenly, yep, five folds instead of 10. Uh, now I'll go ahead and run this. Unselected, come on, there we go, pause. Okay. Just to show you how this will work, let's take a look at the evaluation results. So now we have five folds total instead of 10. Um, simply because our sample size of number of folds is smaller, our standard deviation has gone down a bit. Um, and we didn't happen to get some of the ones that were on the upper and lower ends. So anyway, I, not particularly necessary to do that. I just wanted to show you how it would work. But uh, overall, cross-validate model is a great tool. Um, I think in situations where it's computationally possible, meaning you don't have too much data, or maybe you're in the early stages of trying to validate um, the best possible model, I think this is a great tool and probably a better alternative than the split data pill, uh, which is probably the more traditional and common one, at least the split data pill is this one's, this technique's a little bit newer, but it definitely has some advantages if you've got the power to process it.